the year is 1843, women and children are still 100% considered second-class citizens. Physical correction of perceived slights by a woman or child is still very accepted and honestly a frequent occurrence. Your sister talks to you and you're going to hear a sermon from some Joseph Smith character who claims to have seen God face to face. Your first instinct is that he's a con man, right? But you agree to go so that you can protect your sister. To your surprise, you're actually rather impressed with his preaching. But just as you're really getting invested, you can't help but get distracted by this toddler in the front row screaming her head off. Now the mother's trying really hard to keep the child quiet, but she is failing miserably and she refuses to take the kid out. And soon, Toddler is screaming so loud that nobody can hear the preacher at all. Now, Joseph Smith were just a con man trying to get money and power, and he'd spent quite some time making up this fictitious sermon, and he's losing the crap because of this woman and her child, right? With no man around to act as protector or to keep them in line, how would you expect this con man to react? Would he discipline the child? Would he smack the woman? Or Sean Connery? You did an interview in which you said, it's not the worst thing to slap a woman now and then. As I remember, you said you don't do it with a clenched fist, it's better to do it with an open hand. Mm. Yeah, remember that? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't I, love that. I haven't changed my opinion. Would he follow the accepted protocol of the day and correct both of them? Certainly he'd at least yell at her to quiet the child down and take it out, rather than robbing him of his chance to win over followers with this fake sermon. But what does Joseph Smith actually do? He stops preaching, he kneels down, and he gestures for the little girl to come to him, and he cradles her in his arm and rocks her until she falls asleep. And then he continues to preach about the Savior, Jesus Christ. This draws my mind very much to the Savior, who when his apostles were turning away little children because the master was too busy, Christ chastises them, and he says, Suffer the little children to come unto me. Forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Contrary to the standards of the day, Joseph Smith replicated the Savior's mindset and example that the crowd and the preaching could wait until the little children are shown the love that they need. If Joseph Smith were a con man, he is the worst one in history because his actions continually draw my allegiance not to Joseph, but to Jesus. This is just one of hundreds of tiny little church history examples that strengthen my faith that Joseph Smith was truly called as a prophet of God. That he, though very imperfect, strove to emulate the Savior. And his life and his teachings, I believe, are inspired of God because they draw me closer to Jesus Christ. And that is the greatest source of joy in this life. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name, Receive with me.